Coming in hot today. I'm gonna drink a wellness shot. I feel great. Oh, so much wellness. I feel well. Speaking of which, I hope you're feeling well. Well, come to my video this week. We're gonna do it to him really panicked and fast, but also with good spirits and energy and maybe eat some chips along the way because today we're cooking food for your Super Bowl party or me alone watching the Super Bowl with no friends coming over. Whatever you do for the Super Bowl, you know, if it's just you or your dog or a whole group of people, there's never too many snacks that you can have for this really, really festive day in February. It's the beginning of February, let's celebrate. All right, we got past January, only 11 more months, and we're out of this damn year. I'm not good with uh, dates or planning in general, which is why I thought the Super Bowl wasn't this weekend. So this is um, happening sooner than I thought it was <laughs> supposed to happen, but who cares? You know what I mean? My kitchen's not going anywhere. I'm not just gonna stop doing it to them. The oven stayed on since last week. It's literally been on. Since you watched the last video, that has not turned off. Disclaimer, I'm lying. That would be very unsafe. Uh, anyway, I thought it would be fun uh, to make three Super Bowl appetizer foods and no meal, no dessert, just appetizers, just things that you can s snack on. You know, the calories aren't counting. You can, it's finger food. You just walk around the party with it, pretend, you know, nod your head when people talk to you. Oh yeah, great. Oh, you're starting at a new school. Very cool. I don't care. I'm eating a potato skin. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So we're going to make potato skins, which are some of my favorite like finger food, bar food, just vacation appetizer food. And I figured it would be kind of perfect for the Super Bowl. So we're going to make some potato skins, which is why the oven is on. The potatoes are in there roasting. We're going to make a seven layer dip. Might turn into an eight layer dip or a nine layer dip, depending on how crazy we get. No planning, no promises. Just going to see how many layers we end up with. And lastly, we're gonna make some tater tots, which is pretty much gonna consist of me putting the tater tots in the oven, taking them out and putting some things on them. That's gonna be the, the final, the last thing we do because it's the least uh, labor intensive. It's literally just us, you know, following directions on a label. And maybe I think I'm gonna do two different seasonings on my tater tots. So I'm gonna do two different types of tots, seven layer dip and potato skins. It's gonna be a great day and I'm gonna watch some hopefully really good commercials and a decent football game while I eat all of this food. And you can too, depending on how quickly you can gather ingredients and watch this video. But um, in the name of football, let us cook. We are gonna start by getting our oven hot, turning it on some sort of bake setting and throwing uh, however many potatoes you're gonna cook for the potato skins in the oven. Um, I think I'm doing five or six, which should yield double that of potato skins because you cut them in half. Each potato yields two skins. And while that is going and softening up, we basically need those to the same consistency as we did for the left side. You want to be able to stick a knife all the way through the potato with minimal effort. So that's gonna take like 40 minutes. So we're gonna start by leaving that in there, let it have some time to itself. While that is cooking, we are going to get our refried beans. They were fried and then they were refried. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. And we are going to take these, put I think like maybe two cans, not the bird, just two of these, double one, into a bowl and season it with some spices that we have. But we first need to pick our dish. This is kind of like the ideal dish for seven layers so you can kind of see all seven layers of your dip. And the first layer, which is why we're starting on the bottom, is our beans. So let's crack these suckers open. There's one, two. Let us see how much this is. Oh, there's a little liquid we can drain. Okay, it's gonna look like cat food. There's actually a significant amount of like bean juice in here. Sit down. We'll do two cans. I think two is the perfect amount. Literally looks like cat food. And this bowl is too small. I've never picked a bowl that's too small for the task. 
Never on this show, not once. What do we do when our bowl's too small? We deal with it and we season anyway. So this is a mix of cumin, chili powder, and garlic powder. Also, if you say cumin, I think that's a little bit weird. We could still be friends. I just not really sure about that choice. So we're gonna try to get this all nice and mixed together in our tiny little cat bowl. How did this bowl fill up so quickly? Did you guys see that? That happened so fast. So we're just um, trying to get this all mixed together. While we're at it, I think we're actually gonna grab our salt, put a nice like healthy pinch. It didn't call for salt, but I think we should salt it because this is the last time we're gonna be able to touch these beans before they are on the end of our chip as we dip. Because this goes on the bottom of the dip, meaning once we place this sucker, you know, that's it. That's curtains. Now we're gonna layer the bottom of our dip pan with our beans. It's pretty simple. You're just gonna wanna spread it out to make it a nice like flat first. This is the first floor of the apartment building, you know? I feel like I'm raking a sand trap after I hit my ball into the sand trap for the 10th time of the day. When, usually when I play golf, I hit the sand trap like every time there is one. And then I spend as much time as possible just raking it because at least I can be good at that. We are now going to set our beans aside. And we are going to grab another bowl. You're gonna take about two avocados to do the trick. Uh, this is when we're gonna make our guacamole. I really enjoy guacamole and I, more than eating it, I enjoy making my own guacamole because it's a really simple recipe to follow to make it really damn good. So you're gonna cut down the middle, pop these open. And we're not gonna need a ton. We're just gonna need enough to coat one layer of our dip. So let us scoop out the filling here of our avo, obviously, obviously cado. This is actually a fun recipe to make, you know, for a lot of different occasions, whether you're having like friends over or like you're watching the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, anytime you have guests making a guacamole from scratch, I find is a good way to score points with people, especially when you know what you're doing. Cause I've never met someone that didn't like a really good guacamole. They were like, nah, this isn't, this isn't for me. No, it's for everyone. It's really good. You just got to make it right. So we have our cutting board out. We're actually, we don't need these green onions till later. So we need to wash those and set them aside. Those are for the potato skins. We don't need those for guacamole. We're going to take a lemon, a lemon. And then one of our beautiful Mexican limes from my wonderful neighbor who grows them. And we are going to squeeze all this out into here. I'm gonna do a half of a full size lemon and then a half of the Mexican lime. I'm a big fan of citrus. And when it comes to guacamole, I feel like not enough guacamole has lime and lemon in it. I feel like people skimp on it all the time and I don't know why. I do not know why. We are gonna take our white onion here, cut it down the middle, and we are going to do our, actually, let's take off this top layer. Oh, this just got weird, hold on. There's like a film layer I gotta take off. Um, and we are gonna do a little micro chop slash dice here. Okay, that's about enough. So we're gonna take our white onion, drop it in here. All right, this is the quick and easy way to do it. You're gonna just take a little bit of garlic powder. You can also just dice up some garlic, but I kind of find that this works a little bit the same. Generous amount of salt. And let's smash these avos and start mixing up our guacamole. Do I have salsa? Do I? Do I? Where is, oh, I do, yes, I have salsa. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of salsa into our guac, a nice little spoonful. And we still have to kind of break up the chunks of avocado because we don't want whole pieces. We want it to be nice and smooth. And one thing you cannot forget is cracked black pepper. You're gonna need this if you want good guac. 
mix this all together. Hopefully I didn't do too much onions. I can always add a little more guacamole because I have extras. This is sort of what I like the guac to look like. Let's taste it. You know what I'm making? What? Super Bowl food. I'm hungry. Well, I need... Do I have to wait for the Super Bowl? No, we can eat it before it starts. Don't worry. Oh. So we're gonna take our homemade guac. Jenna, do you like my homemade guac? I love your homemade guac. Hear that? And we're gonna put this as the second layer. <gasps> Fun and yum! Fun and yum! Fun and yum. Both things. Well, you're gonna have a lot to come taste test in maybe like an hour. You excited? We're gonna cover our second layer here with our homemade guacamole, not store-bought, because it can never be this yummy when you buy it off the shelf. You have to make it. Don't buy it off the shelf, make it yourself. Not even joking, that shit is so good. And if you think I put too much lemon, I'm not gonna be mad that you're wrong, but you're wrong. This is where we're looking right now. We need to kind of hurry on the next layer so this doesn't brown. We're going to make our own. We're gonna make our own sour cream. How do we do that? Cup and a half of cashews, three fourths a cup of water. There's our water. We're gonna do lemon juice, about a tablespoon. Be liberal with the lemon juice because the lemon helps take away the flavor of cashews, which you do not want in the final mixture. We're gonna use uh, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. One, two. And a little helping of salt. We're gonna quickly blend this up. Next time you see this, it's gonna be sour cream, okay? It's gonna be sour cream. Bam! And it is sour cream, so we're gonna Empty into two bowls. Why two bowls, you're asking? Well, because we're gonna need it for the next recipe as well, the potato skins. Oh, I'm making a mess. Oh no. Oh, whatever. All right, let's get this thing in the sink. Okay, it's a messy one. Well, we have our two bowls of sour cream. Let us do a little quick taste. Delicious. You can hear the potatoes screaming for their lives. You hear that? Potatoes, am I right? Quit whining. We got our dip back in the mix. And we are now going to spread the sour cream for our next layer. Dude, look at us go. Look at us go, we're almost done here. So we're just gonna not worry too much about having a ton in here. Again, the layers are not supposed to be too thick. You want them to just kind of fill the slot. We're doing a relay race, okay? The guacamole just passed the baton to the sour cream and the sour cream tripped and fell. Get back up, sour cream. So you're just gonna wanna cover every little spot that's not creamed up. Okay. And we're gonna save the rest of our sour cream for our lovely potato skins that are screaming very nicely. Next on the seven layer dip, this is the easy part where I'm just gonna put some pre-made salsa. I honestly don't feel like making salsa. If I'm gonna make either salsa or guac, it's always gonna be guac and then I'll just buy salsa. Cause I feel like the difference that comes from making homemade guac is much bigger than that of homemade salsa. When you dip a chip into this seven layer bad boy, you're gonna wanna get a slice of everything. That's why we're not making each layer too thick because you gotta share the love. Now we are going to set this aside. I am reminded that we do need some green onions. So we're gonna chop some green onions, and get them ready for the seven layer dip because I think we're just about to the top. It's gonna be cheese, green onions, and you're supposed to do tomato bits, which I guess we could do. So I'm gonna do some chopping, and then our seven layer dip is gonna be ready. So just hang tight, 
and we will soon have a dip that is not one layer, not two layers, not three layers, not four layers, not five layers, hold on, I'm not done, not six layers, but seven layers. Okay, well, we're just about done doing it to him with this dip right here. Did you expect us to do it to him this hard? That is a nice looking seven layer dip. Actually, is it seven layers? We got the beans, beans, guacamole, sour cream, salsa, cheese, tomatoes, onions, olives. That's eight. Dude, we did eight layers. Dude. Also, I don't know if you know this, but I got the restaurant size bag of my favorite cheese because if you're not doing that, what's this all been about? Well, there it is. I mean, that's our seven layer dip. I'm fucking excited. I'm actually gonna set this to the side. Actually, I'm gonna put it back here. You chill. And we are now going to put on our hot potato gloves and we're gonna grab these hot potatoes Okay, there's two. How hot do you think this is? It's pretty hot, good guess. <clears throat> Five, six. Woo. So we're gonna keep one glove on, and this is gonna be the glove that we used to hold the potato, obviously, while we cut it. So we're gonna cut it down the middle. We wanna keep the skin as intact as we can, not like I just did. And it should look like that. So here's the part where you have to be kind of not a mess like me. You're gonna scoop out the middle of the potato, but you wanna leave about a quarter inch on the edges. Sort of like a little border, you know? Like when you draw like an outline almost. That's what I'm thinking of, an outline. So you're gonna scoop out the meat of the potato. Not meat and potatoes, meat of potatoes. Okay, I just fucked that up a little bit. Okay, and that's the, just the shitty version of what you're gonna want. So do that, but less bad. Just notice how I'm leaving like a nice kind of outline, little buffer zone of, um, of tato filling. I guess you can think of it like you're making a boat. You know what I mean? All right, this is boring, so I'm not gonna make you watch all this. I'm gonna just um, snap my fingers and through the magic of editing, all of this will be already carved out. Ready? What did I say? It's magic. Anyway, we have our one, two, three, four, five, 12 potato skins, all carved out, ready to go. So before we fill this with our industrial size bag of cheese, amongst bacon bits and other things, we are going to, we're gonna butter these things up. We want them on our side. We gotta butter them up a little bit. Literally, we need to butter them up. So you melt some butter, Get a little brush, and we are just gonna go get in here and butter the top of our potato skins. So it has a nice little layer of crispiness. You can use olive oil, I suppose, if you don't have butter, or if you'd prefer. I don't think it really matters. It's all about just getting the brown crispiness on there. You know, I gotta say, I really love the recipe of potato skins because we're celebrating a part of the potato that is so often disregarded, disrespected, forgotten about, thrown in the trash. No, today, Mr. Potato Skin, we celebrate you and we salute you. Okay, that might've been disrespectful. I just like potato skins, so here we go. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we are going to butter these up, cook them for like five, 10 minutes in the oven face up so that they can brown just like the crust of butter a little bit. Then we're gonna flip them and butter the back sides. We're gonna get these potato skins double cheeked up, if you know what I mean. Okay, so 
here we are. The oven is hot. We are going to just gently set all of our potato skins down. Actually, I wonder if we should butter the backs before we put them in at all, so then all we have to do is flip them. Let's do that. And let's get our, hmm. Yeah, let's, let's do that. We'll, we'll just flip these over and we'll butter the shell or the outside of the potato. Potato shell, band name called it. And then after 10 minutes, we can flip them. And since the inside is already buttered, it'll be easy. We're just gonna brush easy. Look at this. We're cruising, baby. Cruising for some carbs. Band name called it. There we go. Gonna get some nice coverage here. Let the potatoes, the boats of potato goodness carry us off to sea. Look at that, perfect amount of butter. Can you believe? So, see you in 10 minutes. I don't know. Okay, while we wait for those potato skins to get nice and ready for us, we're gonna throw our tater tots in the other oven. I gotta look at the instructions. How do I do this? Full bag, 28 to 32 minutes. That's so much time. All right, well, do we even need a full bag? We can just do a half bag. That's about a half bag. See, the thing about these are they're really easy to make. This is not really cooking this so much as it is preparing. So my goal for this is to cook this batch of tater tots. And once they're almost done cooking, not all the way, I'm gonna divide them in half and use some fresh Parmesan, salt and pepper on one. So we'll have some Parmesan tots. And then on the other, we'll do some buffalo tots. So it's gonna be red and white. Uh, but for now, we need to just get these kind of defrosted. Let's get them in the oven ASAP. Just let that go, let it do its thing. Anyway, we gotta get ready for the next step of potato skins, which is industrial bag of cheese. Um, almost industrial size container of bacon bits, which are completely vegan, which is kind of crazy. And um, sour cream. So we have our, our green onions, our sour cream, and our bacon bits. This is all gonna be our potato skin assembly station. And we're almost there. We're really getting close. We're done. We did it. We did the eight layer dip, or however many layers you feel like doing dip. We did potato skins. Look at these things. They came out so good. There are little boats. And then we have two types of tots. We have the buffalo tots, and we have the Parmesan tots. Cannot go wrong with either. I've spent enough time making and looking at this food. I'm gonna eat a potato skin now. I feel like I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Maybe that's a little dramatic. 
but I don't think so. Yo, this tastes like the best potato skin ever. So I melted two types of cheese. I melted the cheddar and the mozzarella. Mmm. The crispiness is like on point. And the butter, it might have seemed like a small step when we brushed these with butter, but dude, it made a difference. Like, it really has a crispy exterior and the butter flavor really like, it adds a lot to it. Mmm. Mm -mm. Okay, that is delicious. Oh my God. I might be getting ahead of myself here because that's the only thing I tried. But these are amazing. This is the best thing I made today. Damn, we did it to them. What a spread. This is Super Bowl food right here. This is absolute Super Bowl food. I need a taste tester. Come here. All right, you can try a little bit, okay? We can give you a little piece of potato and cheese. Mind you, oh, the cheese fell. Peach snuck into the pantry and stole some treats the other day. So I'm rewarding you, but you need to know that you can't steal food. Here you go, sous chef. What do you think? Want a piece of a tater tot? Okay, you're fired. I'm gonna switch over and try the tots now. These look delicious. The cheese seemed to melt pretty well. Easy recipe if you're feeling lazy. Delicious and delivers. And lastly, in the tots department, we have our buffalo tots. Got a nice like orange red color on it. Oh my God, those are good. We're covering all the bases here. We're covering our buffalo needs, potatoes everywhere. This is like heaven. All right, I'm gonna dip a chip into this big old homemade layered dip. Let's get a nice thick boy. Let's try to get one of every layer. I'm no scientist, but this looks like we got piece of everything, so let's try it. Dude, that is really good. You know what's funny? I've only ever eaten like layered dips like this at Super Bowl parties, so I take a bite and it instantly reminds me of the Super Bowl, like growing up. We came, we saw, and we did it to them. Now before I let you go, I really want you to see Jenna try these, so one sec, I'm gonna go get her. God, what are you doing to me? <laughs> this is it's Super Bowl weekend, babe. Babe, it's Super Bowl weekend. Wait, do you have to tell me what it is or can I just eat it? Because it looks so good. 7.5 layer dip, <laughs> buffalo tots, parmesan tots, and potato skins with chips. Hello, I'm from upstate New York. I have buffalo meat. Oh my God. Oh my God. Those are just parmesan tots. Those are kind of basic. I don't know. Do you want to try a potato skin? These are so, this is so Homemade sour cream? Good. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> it's pretty bomb, right? Listen, okay. I love all of the creative stuff that you do in this kitchen, but sometimes you just gotta throw down with some classics. You That's know? what I'm saying. This is so In the name good. of football. <gasps> you gotta Can try this, the 7.5 layer. Carbs dip. on carbs on carbs on carbs. Okay, thank you, Julian. I'm dipping I it for you. <laughs> mm. You like it? That is so fun and festive. Homemade guac in there too. Were you supposed to bake that? No, nope, because there's like guac. You don't want to bake the guac. Got it. I see. If I had a torch though, I could have melted the cheese on top. Kai, please get a torch. Kai. This is like Super Bowl Sunday. I like to eat food like this and then fall asleep on the carpet on the floor and not watch the football game at all. Find us on the floor this Sunday. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I do. Passed out from food comas. I eat a little yeah. and then I fall asleep on the floor with the dogs. Yeah. Well, the good news is you can make this pretty mm -hmm. easy. This isn't, these aren't complicated. You just gotta put in a little time. 
And then you can have it all to yourself for your guests or whatever. I don't know your, you know, I don't know your situation. Just like make the food. Step one, make the food. Step two, profit. She's McFriggin losing it with Kermit's shirt in her mouth. Bunny, what are you doing? She's tossing it to herself. She's You're funny. really cute. It's your first Super Bowl. Okay, well, I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah, I gotta take a nap now. Okay. All right, we're gonna go take a nap. <laughs> have fun watching the Super Bowl. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me make this food and maybe made it yourself. Who knows? Who could know? Eats one potato skin. I gotta go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Time for nap. Gonna go take a nap with I love potato Harry's skin. Kitchen when in I come hand. in and stuff is like normal and not like that Minecraft kick. It's all about the timing. Sometimes you come in the middle of the storm. Sometimes you come in when it's beautiful and there's a rainbow. This is a beautiful rainbow. What a spread! Thank you so much. Oh my god. <gasps> Thank you. Oh wait, I want to come with. I want to take a nap. <laughs>